Welcome back everyone. Hope you had a safe and happy Thanksgiving. This week at CA Football is here to get you ready for the second round of the FCS playoffs. I'm Bobby Broyles along with Rob Washburn. One team from CA Football advanced this past Saturday, mm -hmm. Rob, as UAlbany with an impressive victory at home versus Central Connecticut State, while Villanova lost a heartbreaker on the road. Yeah, the opening round of playoff action for CA Football teams featured a pair of games that were complete opposites. Yep. Villanova got off to a sizzling start at Southeastern Louisiana, dominating the first half and building a 31 won 14 lead at halftime. However, the Lions turned the tables in the third quarter, scoring 17 unanswered points to pull even. The teams traded touchdowns in the fourth with an extra point proving to be the difference in a 45-44 setback. It was another big game for Wildcats quarterback Daniel Smith, who accounted for 373 yards of offense and five touchdowns, raising his season touchdown total to 48, which is an incredible accomplishment. Even more encouraging is that 18 of Villanova's 22 starters will be back from this year's 9-4 squad, so expect to see the Wildcats prime for a deep playoff run next year. Now, making its first playoff appearance since 2011, UAlbany came out of the gate slowly and trailed 7-0 to Central Connecticut State deep into the second quarter. However, Jeff Undercuffler and top target Juwan Green hooked up on a game-tying 12-yard TD pass with 17 seconds left in the first half, and then connected again on a 40-yard scoring strike just 24 seconds into the third quarter, and the Great Danes were off to the races. It was the start of 42 unanswered points for the UAlbany offense, as Undercuffler finished with a school record six TD passes, and Green and Jerry Reese both went over the 100-yard receiving mark in the same game for the fourth time this season. Not to be lost in the big offensive numbers was the play of the Great Danes defense, which held Central Connecticut just seven points through the first three quarters and kept the team in the game until the offense got cranked up. It was the first win ever for UAlbany in the FCS playoffs and one that will be remembered for a long time. Yep, congratulations again to the Great Danes. UAlbany along with JMU remains in the playoff field as we break down their contests in this Saturday's second round of the mm -hmm. FCS playoffs. Let's begin in Harrisonburg as the second seeded Dukes come off the bye week to take on Monmouth at 1 p.m. from Bridge Fourth Stadium on ESPN3. Yeah, since the day that Kurt Signetti was introduced as head coach at JMU, it's been clear that the goal was not just to capture a CAA title, mm -hmm. but to get back to the National title game after last year's disappointing second round loss at Colgate. The journey begins on Saturday, and the Dukes appear to be peaking as they won their final three regular season games by a combined score of 157-43. to JMU's balanced offense is triggered by quarterback Ben DiNucci, who has completed an FCS best 70% of his passes and has thrown at least two TDs in six straight games. His top target, Brandon Polk, is just 21 yards shy of becoming the Dukes' first 1,000-yard receiver since 1993. And JMU also features the CA's top rushing attack at nearly 250 yards per game, led by the duo of Percy J. Obese and Juwan Hamilton. Now, as good as the JMU offense has been, the defense has been even better, ranking number one in FCS against the run and number three in both total defense and scoring defense. Defensive ends Rondell Carter and John Daka have combined for 45 tackles for loss. Linebacker Dimitri Holloway is three tackles shy of 100, and the Dukes have forced 17 turnovers over the past six games. Now, that defense will get a tough test against a Monmouth team that is averaging 37 points and 488 yards per game and piled up over 500 yards in a 44-27 victory over Holy Cross last week. The Hawks feature the leading rusher in FCS and Pete Guerrero, who had 220 yards and three touchdowns against Holy Cross and has almost 1,900 yards for the season. Quarterback Kenji Bihar was the Big South Offensive Player of the Year after throwing for over 3,500 yards and 29 touchdowns. Now, the Hawks' defense gives up 353 yards and 24 points per game, but is an impressive plus 13 in turnover margin. Daquan Grimes leads the defense with 97 tackles and 12 and a half tackles for loss. At 3 o'clock on ESPN3, UAlbany will look to keep the momentum rolling on the road at fifth-seeded Montana State out of the Big Sky Conference. Yeah, as we mentioned in the Open, UAlbany shook off some early jitters and rolled over Central Connecticut State 42-14 last week for their fourth straight win and first-ever victory in the FCS playoffs. The Great Danes offense was clicking on all cylinders in the second half as Jeff Undercuffler took over the national lead in touchdown passes with 39 after throwing a program record six in a 16-minute span. Receivers Juwan Green and Jerry Reeves combined for 239 receiving yards and three scores, and running backs Alex James came off the bench to rush for 70 yards on just 13 carries. Now with a playoff game under their belts, hopefully that unit will be able to get going from the opening whistle. UAlbany's defense deserves a lot of credit for last week's win, holding Central Connecticut just seven points through the first three quarters. Over the past four games, the Great Danes haven't given up more than 366 total yards, and they held three of those opponents under 20 points. 
Eli Menser is the star with a league best 23 tackles for loss and 14 sacks. But Levi Matheny, Danny D'Amico, and AJ Mister all have at least 100 tackles, and U Albany is forced to see a best 27 turnovers. U Albany faces a Montana State squad that is 9 3 overall, and they're in that number five national seed after closing the year with four straight wins. The Bobcats' offense has the nation's sixth best rushing attack at 270 yards per game, led by Logan James with 788 yards. Montana State uses two different quarterbacks with Tucker Rovig having passed for 1,426 yards and 10 scores. Now defensively, Montana State just gives up 21.5 points per game in a high scoring leg and is especially good against that run. The unit is led by defensive end Bryce Dirk who has recorded 13 sacks and all big sky linebacker Troy Anderson who has 11.5 tackles for loss. As always folks, casports.com backslash live scores is your source for live scoring and in-game live stats for these second round matchups this Saturday. And of course you can continue to follow the league on our many social media platforms such as facebook.com backslash cafootball and twitter at cafootball using the hashtag CAFB. That is it from us today. Enjoy the games everyone.